Yes, a picture is worth a thousand words. So it turns out in a lot of the power apps that we build for things like inspections or reporting or different types of scenario based stuff, being able to take a picture is a very common request. So to do that, we're going to talk about how the camera control can come in there. We're going to talk about how to change the different cameras that you see. We're also going to talk about how the add or remove picture control is a little bit different than the camera control, but gives you some different options. And then of course, we're also going to talk about image size because size matters when you go to save the files. Sound like fun? Well, let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right, so what I did, all I've done over here is I've started a Power Apps mobile app and I have set the background image to be this fun little image of a dog taking a selfie. And then I threw a rectangle around the start button down here. So if I press the button or hover, hover over the button, boom, it takes us to a blank screen so we can start to build from. Now, as a Power App beginner, you probably know already, but it's all right. If we say insert media, and we'll go down here and we'll say camera. And so this adds the camera control to your app. And look at that. Buddy is sitting in his chair, hanging out for hopefully all the pictures, but Betty disappears at some point. Anyway, there you go. Live feed of Buddy. And so with the camera control in your app, right? Cool. I've got this here. Now, how do I capture the image? Okay, that's always the first question. So at its most basic level, we can insert a image control here. Drag it down a little bit. And so we can actually just set this to be camera one dot photo. And so if we do that and tell Buddy to get back into place, we set that. And now if you just preview the app, if we click on the picture or the camera control itself, boom, it takes the picture and we've captured it, right? So that at its most simple level is exactly how that works. Now, honestly, that's not probably the most convenient method, but camera one dot photo, photo is the output of the photo, but it's not intuitive for your users. They have to click on the picture. So typically what I see is that we want to make it a little bit easier on our users. And so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to add a button and we'll pull this down here and we're going to say, Hey, we're just, you know, say take, I don't know. Right. But when we take the photo, what's going to happen is we're going to put that into a variable. So we're going to say update context. That creates a context variable. So a variable just available on the screen. Remember you use set if you want to use it anywhere in your app. And we'll just call this var picture. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, Hey, I want you to be the camera control. So camera one dot, we don't want photo photo is the last time they press the control. And the whole point is that we don't want them to have to press on the picture to take a picture. So what we're going to do is we're going to use camera one dot stream and do that. Now there you go. So that creates variable. So then let's insert ourselves another uh, image control here. Pull this one down here and we're going to set its image to be var picture. So now if you say play and click take, nothing happens, right? But if you look, we don't get an error, but our variable didn't get updated because we don't see the picture of the empty chair here. Why? So in order to use this method of camera one dot stream, what you need to do is go up here to the camera control and it has a property called stream rate. It is zero by default. This is how often it refreshes in milliseconds. So what we want to do is say, Hey, I want to refresh, you know, once every 10th of a second. So we set that to a hundred, then this is going to update. Now I've run into this a couple of times where it gets all angry with me. If uh, I change this, this is a bug that's currently in here. It used to not be here. I hope it goes away soon. But if it does this where it freaks out after you set the stream rate, just go back up here to camera, change this from one camera to another. So zero to one, and then set it back to zero again. And so you're right back to streaming. Speaking of right back, let's put Buddy back in his chair. And if you're wondering where I get the idea for this video, I was getting ready for my upcoming training class, right? So training.powerapps911.com. I've got a live training class. I'm also re-recording our on-demand training class. Lots of training options. Anyway, I was working on the content for those. And I was like, yeah, you know what? This is one of those lessons that we'll share with the whole YouTube world. So there you go. That is the look of a dog that is super annoyed with me. But now if we hold down the alt key and press take, now we've got a different photo, right? Of our picture. Look, there he goes. He's, he stayed long enough for the picture. It's all that matters. He's like a child he is a child, whatever. So setting the stream rate is going to update how often that camera image is changing so that we can take pictures, right? And so by setting it, like I said to this, this is going to update it once every 10 uh, seconds and, or sorry, once 10 times a second, once every 10th of a second. And so that would update if you wanted to update every second, you know, etc. I probably should have done that because now I have to toggle the camera thing again. So that's typically what we're going to do. Now you could, if you said, Hey, I want to automatically take a picture every second, right? So that's a thousand milliseconds there. 
So on stream, this is what happens every time that stream is updated. So in our case right now, once every second. So we can just take that same code that we know that stores the camera into a variable. Right? And if we put that in here, now what's going to happen is that picture is going to update every second, right? So I got my fingers in front of the camera. Oh, not, not in the right spot. But so every second, I'm getting a new photo. So this would be the idea if you wanted it to auto take pictures. I've never had an actual use case where I want to do that, but I wanted you to know that, you know, there is the ability to set on stream. I, so that's that. Now, so speaking of that camera control, so if you wanted to change the camera property, right? So if you look up here, so this is telling you what camera on your computer to use, right? Or on your phone. So if you think about my iPhone, it's got like, I don't know, six cameras at this point. It's got a lot. Um, you know, my PC here has got three different cameras. And so this is a way for you to say, hey, instead of using their zero or their first camera, right? So that would be kind of their primary. You know, if I change this to one, then that's saying, hey, use camera one, which in my case is camera one, the one you're using right now. So that's why it's not working. But if I stop the camera, one sec. All right, so we stop recording with that one. So if we change this from zero and then we change this back to one, now you're going to get that camera. Hi. Right, so you have control over which camera is being used. Okay, let's turn that back to zero. Now, what if you want the user to be able to change the camera? Oh, I should turn the camera back on, one sec. There's my pretty face. So what if you want to be able to let the user toggle the camera? So what you can do is you can give them a drop down. So we can kind of make, move this picture out of our way. So we're gonna insert a drop down here and put a drop down. And so what you're going to do right here for the items property for the drop down is you're gonna get power apps to catch up. Okay, so now it's drop down sample. And so what we want to do here is we're going to say camera control. So the name of your control, and then you're going to do dot available devices. And so what that does now is this creates a drop down that has the different cameras by their name, right? So these are the system names of my cameras. What we need though, remember here, what is this looking for? It's looking for a number. So what you're going to do here is you're going to say drop down one, right? Say my drop down dot selected and then remember if you're not sure what it is it used to do the dot this shows you the fields available there's id available and name so name is hp hd pro webcam 920 we don't want that id is its number so by setting this to be the number now it's going to work all right and so now if we use the drop down and we change it like to my fhd camera there's nothing connected so it'll just be stuck and loading if i change it to the brio which is what we're using right here it is also very confused. Set it back to the pro webcam. And so there you go, right? And I guess I should talk about for a second with the Logitech, because it's in use, right? It's telling you, hey, somebody's using this, right? Like if you read the words on the screen, it will tell you what you've done wrong there. But that's all right, we don't want to use that. Also keep in mind, because they are using the camera control available devices, when I open this app on my iPhone in a few minutes, right? It's going to say, you know, front camera and then all my different rear cameras, right? Like it's going to tell me the different ones. So, so it's not tying it to my PC or my environment right now. It's tying it to the actual camera. All right. So then settings wise, there's not a lot else that you really care about here, right? You've got a bunch of your normal stuff around styling and things like that. Um, really it's the stream rate and the camera property the two that are unique to this one. Now, one thing you might be thinking about, well, Shane, I've used this camera before and it takes very low resolution photos. You're absolutely right, right? It takes like 640 by 480 or something like that. It takes a very small photo, which if you're in a scenario of just, I want to take a picture to like show I was in this room, then great, that would work. But like we've tried to use this for, you know, taking pictures of like a broken part. We want to be like zoom in on the crack of the, in the device, you know, and figure out, you know, what it's doing and you want to be able to use that big giant 20 megapixel camera on the back of your phone you cannot do that with the camera control the camera control does not let you change the resolution or the you know crispness if you will of the photo that is one reason a lot of people don't like to use it so if that's not going to work for you then what might you want to do let's go over here let's just insert ourselves a new screen blank and so if you go to insert, so we just did under media, the camera, but there is also this add picture. Okay. So the add picture control is one of the unique controls in power apps that works differently on a PC versus an app or sorry, on a device that is running the power apps, mobile app, right? So think of iPhones or tablets, that type of stuff. And what that difference is, is if I use this on my PC, that is going to then take and let me use a picture, right? So if I do this, 
It doesn't say, hey, Shane, use your camera, right? It doesn't. It just lets me pick a photo, right? Down here, you can see it even puts this down to just show me image files. But like if we get this picture of Buddy looking all stoic, it is like that. You're probably like, wait, Shane, why is Buddy looking the wrong way? This happens with cameras, right? This isn't necessarily about this video, but we're going to show you anyway. A little, little side trip here. If you click on the, uh, the image control, they have this property called apply EXIF orientation. So this is a special setting of your photo. So depending on how the photo was taken, what device it was, sometimes photos have special metadata. And so EIXF rotation is which way you were holding the camera and it's trying to like put it straight back for you. It almost never works the way you want it to. So changing this to false, if you ever see photos that are looking the wrong way, it's almost always this little setting, okay? So that's on not your camera control, not on your add media button, on an image control, that is where that setting comes up. Anyway, this is how this works on here. Now on a phone, the way that this control works is it is gonna bring us up a little screen and I'm gonna probably put it on the screen beside us right now, but where it says, hey, do you wanna look at the uh, photos? Do you wanna use the camera control or do you wanna select a file, All right? So it gives you different options based on your device. And so if you say, I wanna take a photo, then it will invoke the camera app on your device. And why that is important is because then we can take advantage of flash, we can take advantage of zoom, we have all those capabilities. When we are on a PC though, we don't have all that, it just uploads a file. So this is one of those very rare controls that is completely different on a phone versus the PC. Now, one of the nice things about using it, other than being able to select a photo you've already taken, or take a photo, is it the fact that when you do it, it's going to give you the full file. So if you took an eight meg file picture of Buddy, right, where it's super crisp and you can get in there and zoom in and count the number of hairs on his little chinny chin chin, then it will let you upload that image size. Remember, the camera control doesn't ever take super resolution photos, even when you're on your fancy iPhone Pro Max, whatever the heck they call those things these days, it doesn't matter. But using this control, the add media with image control, that is going to let you take those high resolution photos that you want. But there is a caveat with that. If you look at the Power Apps app on your phone, under settings, scroll down here at the bottom, remember this will be on your tablets as well. But what you wanna do is you have this optimized image for upload and it is checked by default, true. If that is the case, then they will automatically take that eight meg photo that you took of Buddy and pare it down to a 300K-ish photo which is probably not what you want. So in order to get that eight meg file uploaded, then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to turn this off on your device. Here's the real bummer. There is no way for me as an admin or me as a maker to say, hey, turn this off for everyone. It is on by default. So it uploads small photos by default. So if you wanna turn it off, you've got to train them to turn it off. You also can't check in your app, whether or not it is available, right? Like, so this is like a double whammy bad, I think. Now you're probably thinking, why did Microsoft do that? The reason they did it is because, you know, uploading a 300K photo is a lot faster than uploading an eight meg photo. And so if you don't know the difference, wouldn't you rather have the quicker uploads, right? So it's only when you start to get into this. Like we had one customer, we were taking pictures of a sign-in sheet, a safety sign-in sheet every day and Unfortunately, we couldn't read any of the signatures with the 300K images that were getting uploaded. So we had to train the users that took those pictures to turn it off so we could get the high fatality photo. So you could zoom in and be like, oh yeah, that's John's little, you know, uh, writing. And look, he even dotted his last name with a heart over the eye. It's so cute. So just keep that in mind that that is, you know, an important setting that you can't control and that you can't even check for. You're just gonna have to tell people to change it if you wanna get high fidelity photos. So now that we've captured photos in our app, right? We've got this lovely little VAR picture. You know, we wanna be able to save that, right? The best way to save that is to upload it to a file store, right? Like in most cases, that's gonna be like a SharePoint document library. I still think that is probably the best, or technically it's the second best, but it's the fastest, easiest, cheapest place to store images. And so if you look up there, I'll put a link to the video that talks about uploading files. And in that video, we talk about getting the file into the image control. So you can skip all the part of getting the file to the image control. All you need to do is once you've got the image control, you're gonna convert it uh, 
JSON right into base 64 and then take that base 64, pass that over to flow and then upload it, right? So if you've uploaded files before, this is no different. Another setting I wanted to talk about for one second here. Oh, look, we can take our picture again. There we go. Um, is keep in mind that when you're building these out, speaking of metadata, you know, one of the pieces of the metadata that you often get in um, images that you might not be getting with a Power App image is the location. So you could do like location.latitude. So that is my current latitude. If I did location.longitude, that'd be my lo current lo longitude. If I put both of them on now, you all would know where I live. That'd be bad. You get the idea. You can do location.latitude and location.longitude. Those give you the coordinates of where the user's at. So you could grab that as some metadata. So when you're uploading the image, you could also pass the image metadata so you would know exactly where they were when they took the picture of the problem. Now, if you're thinking, well, what if I wanted to save these images off to SharePoint attachments? That is possible as well. I'm going to be super honest with you guys. I hate SharePoint attachments. They're harder to work with. They're harder to get in, they're harder to get out. They don't make a lot of sense. And in a scenario like this where you're taking pictures and you're trying to, you know, grab these and probably the photo is the basis of your app, you don't want to mess with attachments. Technically you can. I guess I'll put a link to that video too. But but I, I don't want you to be thinking about attachments. Think about saving them in the document libraries or Azure Blob Storage is the fastest place, but it's premium and it's a little harder to work with. So we won't get into that. Anyway, that's what I've got for today for your kind of primer on using the camera control and the add picture control. If you got questions, comments, any of that stuff, let me know down below. Also remember, right? Like this is part of like one of the lessons I'm working on for my training class. So I've got an upcoming training class. You should be joining it. Go to training.powerapps911.com and sign up today. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.